Ringer. Chapter 33. A bug crawled down the middle of his back. He tried to reach it. He whipped off his shirt, ran a fingertip up his spine. It wasn't a bug. It was sweat. The sun boiled in a cloudless sky. The dumpster had been slowly reeling in its shadow, so that he now had to sit with his back flat against it and his knees drawn up in order to remain wholly in the shade. The dumpster's metal flank felt cool and crusty against his bare back. His breath and his heartbeat had long since returned to normal. The noontime music of the church bells had passed an hour ago, maybe two. He was hungry, thirsty, but he was also safe. The only other safe place being his own house, which was exactly five and a half blocks from the dumpster behind the great grocer supermarket. A back door slammed open. Out came a worker dragging two hugely swollen black plastic bags. Seeing Palmer, he said, Are you waiting to help me? Was the man joking? He wasn't smiling. No, said Palmer. <clears throat> With a grunt, the worker heaved one bag, then the other, into the dumpster. He looked down at Palmer. He wagged his head. Made in the shade. He went back inside. Five and a half blocks. In his head, Palmer plotted a course that, except for the final half block, kept him in alleyways. Even so, streets would have to be crossed in broad daylight. And, anyway, the guys themselves took alleys as often as streets. They could be anywhere, around any corner, behind any parked car. They could be in front of the great grocer right now, asking people, Hey, did you see a kid? They might already be spreading word around town. Palmer LaRue has a pigeon! He knew that if that fact had ever been in question, the question had been answered spectacularly by his actions of the morning. The back door slammed open. The worker came out, but this time there was nothing in his hands but a can of Sprite. He stopped in front of Palmer and held the can down to him. It hadn't been opened. You look like you need this, kid. It occurred to Palmer that this might be some kind of trick, but he was too thirsty to care. He took the can. It felt blessedly cold. He stared up at the man. He felt like crying. The man's lips almost smiled. On the house, he said, and he was gone. Palmer snapped open the Sprite and drank the can empty, taking time out only to gasp for breath. He lay his head back against the dumpster and closed his eyes. In spite of himself, in spite of everything, for a precious few seconds, he felt good. His first idea had been to wait until dark, then make a run for home. As the sun dropped below the roof line of the great grocer, he began to see that the idea was bad. Nipper would be coming home soon, and who could say that they were not waiting for him? Maybe even on the porch roof itself, with stones, slingshots. Suddenly, it was clear. He had to get home before Nipper. Now. He dropped the can, and he ran. Alley and street. He took the fastest way, driven by images of Nipper flying into a blizzard of stones. As he approached the turn onto his block, it occurred to him that they might be waiting at his front door. It occurred to him that this might be his last minute on earth. He slowed down, and he thought of Nipper, and he ran on. They were not there. He burst into his house. He wanted to collapse right then and there, to rub his face in the living room rug, but he dared not stop. He took the stairs three at a time, flung open the door. Nipper was at the window, on the sill outside the screen, and inside, sitting on his pillow, was the yellow cat, Panther, facing the window, its head as still as a statue, its tail sweeping slowly from side to side. It hadn't even bothered to look at Palmer. The closest thing was a comic book. Palmer hurled it. The cat hissed, screeched, leaped to the floor, and was downstairs before Palmer finished his scream. It was then, as he opened the screen to let Nipper in, that he knew his pigeon must go.